Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Center and welcome back to another garden tour. It is June in the garden, which means the temperatures are starting to go up. Blooms are either blooming or fading, depending on the, the flower. And in an extra special twist, June is my birthday month. So that typically means fun birthday presents for me from my family. Uh, I often get garden presents for my birthday since it's the middle of summer and they all know I love my garden. So I have two, I have several birthday presents from my mom and from myself because I love me too. Either way, we're going to go ahead and start as always in front of the shed, starting with one of my brand new birthday presents from my mom and work our way around the garden. It is five o'clock and it is still hot. It is still humid. I've waited for it to cool off. You can see the shade. Uh, Alabama humidity doesn't seem to care if it's shady. It's still very, very hot. So let's go ahead and get back inside while we still can. We may not spend too much time in the garden in the end of June and July as we'd like. Ta-da! Can you see the present? My mom got me this brand new arbor. It was actually a Facebook marketplace, so she needs a little love and she's very uneven. <laughs> Since I'm still working on putting the gravel back here, she's actually on a big pile of rocks and she needs some rebar and some love, but we've put her in place just to see how she looks. So far, I love her. I think I'm gonna grow some clematis on here, which I think will be beautiful. A lot of my annual flowers, like my sweet alyssum, are just starting to hit the struggle bus with the heat and really need a good dose of liquid fertilizer. So hopefully we can get that done in the next couple weeks. But the roses have bloomed out. They were beautiful and they will, these are knockout roses, so they will continue our uh, pop star and twist and shout the hydrangeas. The first round are finishing up their blooms, but you can see they will continue to put out new buds uh, for the rest of the season. Before we go down the way, let's just do a glimpse up here. Most of our lilies are done. As they continue to die back, we will then come in and cut them back. But for now, we want to leave them to soak up sun. This is our last set of glad stalks that need to be cut back. I've cut most of them back. The verbena needs a dead head and a fertilizer. My drumstick alliums are just going out of style. Geraniums just need a dead head. They have been doing fabulous here, but we need to come in and just take the old spent blooms away. And you can see I have some tall zinnias that have self-seeded themselves here. I don't hate it. If they get 36 inches tall, which is the variety these are, I may just have to keep cutting them back. But, you know, flowers are great. I put in some misty blue spires, salvia, and they are, they're trying very hard to die. It's too hot. Also dying are my beautiful, beloved zinnias up front here. These guys can usually handle the heat and they are just not cutting it right now. And I'm not sure why I have zinnias, short zinnias over here in the raised beds that are doing great. And those ones were supposed to be here. So maybe I should have gone with those. I bought these because they were just so pretty. They were beautiful, glorious, big puffball zinnias. And since that first round is over, I haven't gotten a single solitary second puffball at all. So, you know, it is what it is. Maybe this particular variety, as glorious as they are, would do better in a different spot and not be this spot. But the gumfrina I started from seed is doing fabulous and just starting 
to put out buds and blooms, which is great because they will get really big and happy here um, in the boom of heat from July. Gumfrina is definitely one that loves the heat, so it will only get better with time. Let's go ahead, come down this way. I deadheaded a couple of my mums. I need to come in and do these as well. We have a long enough season here that they will bloom for us twice, once in the beginning of the season and once at the end. My oak leaf hydrangea is going out of bloom. And those red ruby blooms are turning brown. But my butterfly bush needs a dead head is looking beautiful. When it is blooming. And all of my blueberries this is a new one to the collection. This is peach sorbet and you can see she is starting to berry up, which is nice. My other ones are just about done for the season. And the hibiscus that we transplanted is blooming. She's been blooming for days now, which is wonderful. She has not bloomed once since we planted her three years ago. And you can see blooms more blooms all the blooms love it the rose of sharon also blooming so all the big plants we've been putting in the stick we just planted doing fabulous Our El Nino, this is our desert orchid flower. Oh, look, oh, it moved. As I say, there's a dragonfly. Um, is looking really good, but he is a, a little wilty this afternoon, so I think I might need to up his water. Whew. All right, the cut flower garden, y'all. Unlike me, she loves the sun, which is good because that's why she's down here. I want to go inside. <laughs> The amaranth is just starting to tassel, which is very exciting. This is a coral amaranth, coral fountain. Oh, the status is still growing beautifully. Celiosa still coming in. More gomphrina here. This is a purple. And the dwarf cherry zinnias that I probably should have put up front but I thought it would take so long for them to come in since I planted them from seed. My pink lemonade blueberries. Oh. This is why we do what we do y'all. This is why I do what I do despite the heat. So everything is looking great. This bed, while there's still plenty coming up, it's just not doing much. This one cosmos is great. I still have all the little seedlings here from the nigella, but nothing that's growing into dramatically. My pin cushions are still just the teeny tiniest little pin cushions. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. I have strawberries. I have been getting so many strawberries out of this little patch. And they are delicious. Thanks, Lily. Potatoes are potatoing. Should be ready to eat soon. Oh yeah. Somebody's already eaten the tops. Yum. Watermelon needs to be tied up on its steak, but it is growing. So are the cucumbers. This is watermelon. This is cucumbers. The dahlias are coming in strong. Which is fabulous. 
my ooh. David Austin Rose, the Queen of Sweden, is blooming again. Third round of blooms. I'm loving her. I would like to plant something around the base next year, maybe some sweet alyssum or something, but you know, I definitely love her. We'll have to see um, how I'm supposed to prune her in the fall because the first round of blooms was like down here. Second, you can see where I deadheaded was about here. We had a whole bunch for the second round. And now right now for the third round, we've just got these two stalks. We'll see how she keeps going. Now we have, well, before we get to the good buds, we have my tomato plant. This is a cherry tomato plant. which has seen better days. I mean, she's given us lots of tomatoes, but I don't know if she needs more water or soil or something, cause she is really, whatever the struggle bus is, she's on it. Oh, my beans are beaning. That's exciting. I would like to eat them, haha. -ha. But I think we did start the onions and carrots a little too late because while they are coming up, they're still just, I think it's just too hot. We'll try them again in cooler weather. They are typically cooler weather plants down here. But the zinnias that we direct seeded are doing fabulous. You can see that there's more sun on this side. So it kind of goes whoop down to the babies, but they'll all come in eventually, especially as I start to cut them. I haven't even pinched them back. Look how pretty they are though. I love it. Love it. Need to come cut a whole bunch more Cosmos, but they're so ready. Even with the deadheading that needs to happen. <sighs> the patio is still fabulous. And here comes our second and third birthday presents. So this one, one, two, three little lime punches. Birthday presents from my sweet little brother. I love them. There will be a whole video on them soon, but they are citrus green when they come out, the blooms. They turn white and then blush pink and then a dark red maroon ruby kind of color, which is where they get the Little Lime Punch name. They are sisters, of course, to the Limelight Primes and I just love them. I, I want them to kind of just surround the patio in a loose way. I'm not doing a whole uh, garden bed around the little patio here, but Think these blooms will be a big statement piece and that is what I'm looking for happiness my tulip tree is doing well and then I did pot up a super tunia bubble gum which is finally coming into its own and another sweet alyssum again I think all the sweet alyssums just need a haircut and some fertilizer because they've seen better days but I just planted this one last week it had seen better days coming from the nursery. I got them on the clearance rack. So, you know, is what it is. Knockout Rose, I do need to deadhead a little bit, but she's coming back for her fourth or fifth round already. And I think the gardenia is finally done for the season. It had blooms even last week, which is really late. Then we have behind the bricks that still have to be returned. <laughs> Uh, my third birthday present, this one from my mom. So it is a bar cart. If you saw the video where I set this table for a lunch with my friends and realized there's no room for anything on this table, but mainly like a couple plates and, and cups, like not even a pitcher of lemonade. <laughs> so my mom found, I told her I wanted a cute little bar cart. She found this monstrosity. It's very cute. It will hold a lot. And she got it for a great price on Facebook Marketplace. So. I do like it, but I'm trying to decide if I should paint it or not. I do want to show you real quick in my gorilla cart. 
I am soaking a few water tree rings. So these I use on all my big trees and even on small bushes or hydrangeas. So you, you soak them for four to six hours and then you put them around the base of your plant and they will keep your plant constantly watered, slow trickle effect for quite a long time. So I just put them in here about an hour ago, but the pellets that are in these bags soaks up the water. So I got one for each of the limelight primes, or not limelight primes, the little lime punches, so that they will get constant water out here in the hot, hot, hot sun, which they can handle our hot sun. You can see I planted them about a week ago. I've been hand watering them, but the leaves are, you know, they're not scorched, they're not burning. The blooms are still beautiful. They have not suffered being out here at all. The only spots that have a little bit is there's a one or two blooms that have a smidge of brown coming on, but that's not too bad for being planted in the heat of the summer. I'll take it. I think the tree rings will help though. So let's go over to the other side of the shed. So we have been working on this area with all my pots all week. I am still not 100% in love with all the pots, especially because some of them need leveled better, but you know, we're working on it. Finally got them all planted. So if you wanna watch that video, I will link it down below, but another knockout rose. This is a candy, candy cane one, a chiffon pink tropical uh, Cajun hibiscus, eucalyptus, zinnias, sweet alyssum, another buttercup petunia, and some purslane. On the other side of the noisy air conditioner that I'm working on covering is my brand new Rose of Sharon. This is a purple pillar, which will get 16 feet tall, but only three feet wide. So I am working on filling up some of this vertical gray space here without a climbing element. And since my smoke bush has decided to die, it's only come back. This one little bitty baby <sighs> decided not to go with another smoke bush. The Rose of Sharon should do beautifully. But something's definitely eating it. So we might need to spray it with something and I moved to Lantana in order to plant it. And she has been suffering, but I'll give her some more water and she should be fine. The butterfly garden is looking sad. That is because there are more caterpillars, swallowtail caterpillars, which is the whole point. I plant this dill and parsley for them. So if they wanna eat it, have at it. they are literally all over it. So hopefully we will have even more swallowtail butterflies soon. The gara needs trimmed back a little, but the cone flowers are cone flowering. Even in the path, I need to transplant these babies. <laughs> That's okay. The bee bomb is also getting ready to come back for a second round. We did uh, stake these up a little, obviously not enough because they're really laying down. We had a lot of rain, but honestly, I don't mind. I love how carefree and kind of wild they are. So it does not bother me. Likewise, the unplugged pink salvia just got deadheaded. It needs probably a little more, but I love that while the blooms on this baby are this pinkish purple. Even once the blooms fall off, the calyxes here are this dark, like burgundy purple. And I think they're still pretty. You do not need to deadhead him to keep the blooms coming, but it does tidy up the plant. So I typically deadhead them once all of the calyxes fall off and you just end up with the 
the stalks. Must have dropped this one. But my double scoop raspberry coneflower is putting out so many new blooms. And I am excited. If you guys remember, my mom bought this plant for me. I have wanted one for years. And when I finally found it, I couldn't afford it. And she so sweet to buy it for me. And this is the first set of blooms that it's put out since I got it. And I'm so excited. I was starting to think it would never bloom. It had three blooms when I bought it and then none. And then this, this last couple weeks in the heat, it has just exploded. So thank you, little flower. Oh, the sweet alyssum, again, needs some love, but it's doing okay. And I do want to point out that a few cone flowers that have self-seeded in this bed are starting to bloom. And I don't always leave self-seeded things, but stuff like that, I want everything to be wild and growing together. So there you go. Man, this dragonfly loves it here. And all the foxgloves are still foxgloving. We could use a little more love on some stuff like the self-seeded sweet alyssum, but in the heat of the summer, it is what it is. It'll come back, rebound a bit in the fall. My hydrangea here still has quite a few pretty blooms, but it is getting to the point where I probably need to deadhead it in the next couple weeks and only leave the pretty, pretty, pretty ones. She will continue to put out buds through the end of the summer, but the big main flush we get is probably just about done. Foxgloves still putting out new growth, which is amazing. And the yarrow needed to be staked up a bit because she is really falling over. But my super tunia butter, buttercup bubblegum. My dog is buttercup. You can see she needs fertilized, but uh, she is still big and beautiful and gorgeous. But the star of the show right now is this hot, hot, hot lantana. Look at these blooms going to town. When everything else in your garden starts to suffer, lantana will steal the show. She just loves the heat. <sighs> Likewise, my white coneflower is doing fabulous. This one's dead. This one's doing fabulous. And I've been looking all season for a second one with no luck. We'll get one eventually. Another self-seeded zinnia. Ah, she can live there. It's fine. Also, I wanted to point out that my Silver Falls Diachondra experiment of using it as a ground cover, I think is a complete success. She's still filling in to get really full, but she's spreading out nicely. She looks really pretty. If you get to the strands before they root in, you can really help direct them where you want them to go. I haven't been doing that. And for the most part, she's been doing well. The only thing I've been trying to do is redirect anything that comes onto the path because it's too hot and she doesn't like that. <laughs> she likes the cool mulch. Now, here is my birthday present to myself. A limelight prime standard. I have been wanting one of these for so long. This right here is where I have extra drip that I can pop in um, when I get a plant that isn't planted yet. And so she has water, but look at all these buds. I think she's gonna go over in the pot army by the air conditioner, but for now, I'm kind of enjoying her by the porch. I have wanted one of these for so long and I'm so excited to finally get one. 
When I priced them last year, they were between two and three hundred dollars. This year I found some for 150, I found some 105, but all the ones I found at 105, I should have grabbed one. They had 10, but it just wasn't in the budget. And I waited until I got paid. And when I went back, they only had one left. And if I'm splurging on a plant, I don't want to pay 105 for the last one. It was not the best. Um, so I didn't get it. I was good and I waited. And then when mom and I went up to Montgomery to a different nursery, we were, we were doing something else. We were visiting my aunt and uncle and the nursery up there had them $59. It was all I could do to only buy one. Happy birthday to me. I look at the window boxes. Now, as you can see, this one in the sun definitely is doing the best, but they are looking beautiful all the way down. The silver falls though here in the sun. She is just so thick and beautiful and I love it. Oh, my lace cap hydrangea, you can see the first round of blooms and then she is putting out all of this new growth where we should have new blooms. Just came through and deadheaded a bunch of this. So hopefully we will get flushes of new blooms there. My little purple cone flowers are looking beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. My daisies need some prayers, I guess. They're not bad. They're just not like as lush and full as I was expecting. Same with my fan flower and gumfrina here. But, you know, we still have time. My butterfly bush, however, is looking amazing. I love those bluish purple blooms. <sighs> More things that need fertilized, but are doing okay. Gora needs cut back. Lantana will have new blooms. Oh, look at that. My foxglove is foxgloving. That's nice. <sighs> All this Lantana is an experiment to see if I can get a carpet of lantana with blooms. And she's trying to stand up, which I don't hate, but I want her to lay down. I might need to come in and stake some of those arms down. <sighs> Ooh. And then we have more salvia that's doing fabulous. My, my big, beautiful butterfly bush. This one's doing really well. And look at all those new buds. Go, baby, go. Vinka's doing great. Getting into the shade garden where a lot of things are just going to be foliage this time of year, and that's okay. Peonies, mums, cyclamen, and my one hydrangea that has a tiny bloom. And will probably give us more, but this one never does as well as the big one down below. And there we have it. The garden is beautiful this time of year. I love sharing all my new plants. I got too many in the month of June, both from friends and family and from me. I didn't get that many. I just got big, pretty ones, which is not normal for me. I typically get small ones or grow things from seeds. So I was very excited to get three limelight, uh, little lime punches and a limelight standard in the same month. It's like Christmas and my birthday. Either way, I will be back in July. We will see what the heat has done. But before I go completely, I have one more thing I forgot to share. And that is the blooms on my crepe myrtle tree. This is my purple twilight crepe myrtle. And she has hot pink blooms that are blooming. They are so pretty. My white crepe myrtles haven't started yet, but they are always later, so I love to see it. It makes me smile every year. Bye for real.